Hi everybody, I wanted to tell you about this, so excited about this. We're having a writer's recharge happening here in Valdosta, Georgia in person. It's gonna be September 15 through 21. And we have, are you ready? We have Phil Lawler, for the co-creator of Adventures in Odyssey and Kathy Buchanan, a beloved writer with Adventures in Odyssey and wrote many books. And also, um, you know, Phil did Jungle Jam, did a bunch of stuff just amazing writers and myself we're all going to be here in person and we're going to re-energize your writing and we want to take your writing to another level we're going to give you the fundamentals and the nuances that will take you to a whole other level in your writing it's going to be an amazing time of instruction inspiration and lots of free bonuses like one-on-one -on -one coaching time lunch and learn we'll do some uh, little tours around of the of the new studio that's starting here just amazing things so Check it out. We're going to put the link here in the description. It's called Writer's Recharge, September 15 through 21 here in Valdosta. And we want, we, we already have people signing up. We would love to have you. So sign up soon because it's going to fill up pretty quickly. And we'd love to have you. So come on, check out that, that link. And we look forward to you being here. Thanks. Story Chat with John Fornoff, the art and passion of storytelling. Here's your host, Brian Bullabush. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Story Chat, our little corner of the internet where we hope to inspire y'all in the art and passion of storytelling. And I said y'all again. I, I, I keep doing I it. John, how you doing? How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. You're doing, doing really well. I'm Southern I'm, boys you, down here. You're, you're getting into that Southern thing there. That's really good, man. <laughs> yeah, doing great. I am so excited. I would just jump right in because I'm so oh, yes. excited about yes, this yes, yes. today. And, um, We're but, jumping yeah, out but, but of I'm our skin. Well. Mm. Wait, you're not, you're not supposed to talk yet, Katie. Oh, you, know, oh. you have to have an introduction. We have to like have the the parade and stuff. I'm oh, sorry, but that's sorry. okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I was jumping in. Part. I was jumping in. <laughs> I was just following John, orders. Okay, jo John. Okay. Who is this strange <laughs> voice on our podcast? Who could that possibly be? This is a beloved. <laughs> beloved friend of mine this is katie lee and she is just a dear dear friend we've worked together for years and of course she's the voice of connie in adventures in odyssey she is like she's been i mean she's like everybody she's been in dungeons mm -hmm. and dragons muppet babies Darkwing duck richie rich she played richie and richie rich she oh. uh, she, uh disney's adventures of the gummy bears totally spies i mean this lady is amazing um she's the voice of world mind for Gal galaxarium disney world uh, did i say that word Galaxarium. Uh, there, I'll let you do that. Okay, you're the pro here. <laughs> it's, okay. it's Guardians of the Guardians of the Galaxy ride thing. Oh, that's cool. awesome! And you're in that. That's awesome. Uh, I'm she's the, done I'm a lot the of voice video in games. the queue. You might, if you're stuck in the queue for 45 minutes, you'll hear me the whole time. Mm, that is awesome. I love it. I love it. Can you give us a little sample? A little, a little feel uh, for what it's like. Welcome, Terrans, to the world of. I don't remember the, how it goes, but it's something <laughs> like that. It's very much like this. Welcome. You will now be. You can say the. Yes. You can say the forgotten world of because we forgot the, what it was. The, the forgotten mm. world of what's it called? And what, where, where, where do the people go in Guardians of the Galaxy? Uh, I should know this. I should know this, but I did it a long time. I had to say it five times. Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> Cosmic Rewind. Yes, World Cosmic Discovery. Re yeah, the Cosmic Rewind is the name of the the thing. The Whirly Gig. Yeah. It's yeah. A Epcot. Yeah, but that's not the uh What is the Xandar? Xandar. Yes, welcome Xandar. to the world of Xandar. <laughs> yes, we will be exploring. Yeah, and so it's very much like this. Yes, that's they so wanted... soothing when you're in line and it's yeah. it's hot outside and you're just a long line and we hear that's gonna hear... that, that welcome, to well, welcome Terrans to the <laughs> <laughs> to the world to the southern part of the planet. Yes, yes. Uh, Katie also Katie also hosts a podcast called Tell You Later. Tell you later. Man. It's a show. My, my producer would call it a show, but it a is show. a show. It's a Patreon supported show with some content on YouTube. There you go. Awesome. Awesome. And you're also an author. You authored books. I did. And you know, I and don't, I can show you a copy. Do you want to see it? I didn't yeah, put I would it love in to the see booth it. Yeah. with me. I'll, Hold sure. on. Sure. Okay. 
I'll 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 uh, pitch for you here while we're while you're doing that. <laughs> a book called Adventures in Oddity, Oddity, and she also wrote a new book called The Itty Bitty Book of Codependency, oh, which is so I just love this title. Did so you, here she comes. Did I give you a copy? You did, and you signed it. I did. Did you look at it? I, no, not I yet. I did. It's I read the whole pictures. thing. Pictures. Yeah, it doesn't take long. <laughs> see, because it's only. <laughs> It's not the authoring part that is so, it's got wonderful drawings. It's got, it's like yeah. a comic book. So, woo, I just dropped my It's so book. cool. Yes. That's, That's awesome. amazing. Bitty book of so codependency. It's a little, it's a little conscientious nudge. Um, and then, let's see. Uh, sorry, I dropped my other book. This and then, by the I, way, look at the background I, there. You see Darkwing Duck. You see Disney. Oh, you got another one. Oh, this is Adventures in Oddity. Yes, this is uh, uh, that I did with, with Will Ryan. So oh. we still have copies. Mm. It's still available, autographed, or actually, I have. I might have two copies that he signed because oh. I was in charge of shipping. So, yeah. Uh, but oh, yeah, so this wow. is the bonus edition, and and both books are available through my website if someone wants mm -hmm. an autograph or on amazon and uh i only have to sell like about thir i don't know maybe three thousand copies to make up yes. uh, what i owe the il paid the illustrator so you know if anybody's <laughs> interested this makes a great great gift for the codependent <laughs> in your life it may be you it may be you, may be you. Okay. so well put Oh, one more thing before we jump in. I got to just, just share this with people who are listening and watching is Katie is also an amazing coach for voiceovers, for uh, getting into your character, your acting, that kind of stuff. She is wonderful. I've taken her course. I've taken a couple of her courses, uh, SonicCon, and took some personal coaching as well. I highly, highly, highly recommend well, Katie. Thank you. On um, that note, yeah. I am going to put if anybody's interested, please sign up for my newsletter on my website so you'll know because I am going to do an introduction to animation workshop. I promised somebody yes. I would do it. It's just going to be like a big group intro to animation on Zoom. And so I'm going to – I have to pick the date. This weekend I've like promised myself and, and somebody else. I'll do that. <laughs> yeah. um, and we also run a, a – a, weekly online workout for animation. I don't know if you know, John, Friday morning. Oh, I didn't know about that. Yes, yeah, it's through oh, that's awesome. VO, VO Heaven. It's through VO Heaven. It's a whopping $35 a month every Friday morning. Oh, wow. And if anybody, and we take turns directing each other. And uh, so that's, I can give you the link for that. But if you look up VO Heaven, Dot org and then scroll down to the animation workshop and click that and uh, we usually vet people it's people who've had some experience but maybe want to just work on their character development yeah and that's what we do on Friday mornings and so there's that, that is so too. fun yeah. wow that's awesome so this is all you we can find a lot uh, katielee.com is that right is that yes, where, 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 where you yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's probably okay. there should be a -E link if there is not a link to the animation workout, shame on me. I'll have to add that this weekend too. I've already found it. So <laughs> you it's, have. It's, uh, yeah, it's oh, already on, on, my, okay. on my website. Uh, voheaven.wildapricot.org. Yeah, that's voheaven. But okay. I don't know if there's a link on my website. There should be. But Brian, tell me about you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, um. I'm uh, and that sums it up right with there. Blonde hair, and I've got a lovely wife named Becky, and a uh, oh my gosh, an eleven month year old son. Who eleven uh, month year old? You know what? An eleven month year old That's son. Interesting, yeah. Yeah. Katie. It's today has been a long year. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's yeah. been it's been a lot of stuff is going on. But we want to talk about stories. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's I, right i wanted to know your story but i will tell you something first do you want to hear it maybe yes yes i want to hear it. yes i want to hear it. well that's the first thing you got to get people's interest and draw them in because if you start <laughs> out not being interesting no one's gonna listen wow that's good for that's good for all kinds of storytelling. You gotta grab them right at the start. That's and you did it with your voice. That was cool. It's like, okay, where's she going? Where's she going? Okay. Well, a lot of people think, well, animation's very big and loud for sure. 
but oh, yeah. so, so our to... voice is a lot of times it's that quiet voice mm -hmm. that gets the attention because we have to mm -hmm. lean in and hear more right mm -hmm. i love it i love it that's so cool that's a, that's a really okay, good point Sorry, go ahead, go ahead Brian. <laughs> no, go, Brian, go, go. Oh, I was just going to ask on this topic of interesting, what would you say the most interesting story you've ever worked on, whether if it's an episode of Adventures in Odyssey, Darkwing Duck, just throughout your whole career, what's the most interesting one, whether it was the working on it process or just the story itself, or what was the most interesting one? Not necessarily the best. The, but the it most, most interesting, interesting storyline. Mm -hmm. Sure, we can go with mm -hmm. that. Is that what you're asking? Sure. Yeah, we'll go with that. You know, it always intrigued me when, I don't know, I don't think you wrote it, John, Malachi's message. That was that. Oh, that was Paul, Paul McCusker. Yeah, the idea of angels coming to earth. And, that was fascinating. And, um, positive angels, because we know there are a lot of bad angels running around. Yeah. Uh, but, but this is Philip Glassboro, so it's definitely a yeah. good angel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that was very intriguing to me. Um, I I like that yes. a lot. Um, that was cool. And you know, <clears throat> funny, I started rewatching Darkwing Duck, and it yeah. actually has amazing scripts. But what the, what's great about it is the story is about a father and a daughter, really. Mm -hmm. uh, and that mm -hmm. is the that is the heart of it. And you don't didn't realize it. We had so many wonderful guests on the show <laughs> and crazy characters. But when you watch it, it's just that's the heart of it. And uh, oh. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Katie, just for fun, if you wouldn't mind, could you could you do a little honker for us? For Hunker Muddlefoot? Hunker Muddlefoot is very smart and he would never have a problem with Zoob. <laughs> 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 I love it. What, just for fun, just 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 can give us some other voices you did. Like well, you've done I did Little Miss Chatterbox and the Mr. Men show, and she talks really fast <laughs> all the time. Uh, but also, I did another character called Little Miss Helpful, and she just just trying to be helpful. She's got that kind of southern <laughs> thing, and Little Miss Daredevil who says, "Hold on to your patootie." Uh, I happen to have a picture of this is a anime show yokai watch. This is Usapion, and he's dead, damn it, he's got gets very violent. Um, <laughs> he's very crazy. Who else? Oh, let's see, Rolf the dog on the Muppet Babies. His key phrase is far out. <laughs> mm. I'll play the piano. Uh, let's see. Who else do we have around here? We got Honker. Sunny. Sunny Gummy from the Gummy Bears. Yes. Does my hair look oh, all yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, uh, oh. Oh, and here's my little do -do 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 Sheila from Dungeons and Dragons, oh. who pretty much sounds like <laughs> me and Connie. Bobby, look out! Oh. <laughs> She's a little warrior. She's a little worried. Hey, what what do you think? I'm doing I'm doing a voice. Oh, I know what I want to tell you. Hold that thought. Oh, go, 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 go. You got On adventures.tv, I'm the voice of Lily for Lily's Lab. Adventures in Genesis has a TV streaming. Oh. Adventures.tv. We just did our recorded the second season. And it's very awesome. cool. Yeah, Lily's Lab. And she she's kind of like this. She's a very smart dinosaur. And she talks to to uh you know, Mr. Ham to find out about stuff. <laughs> that is so cool. I love it. Oh, I love it. I love it. What, as you're thinking, like, Katie, one thing you taught us as students, all that, this is like how you get into, how you get into character and the story of the character and all that. For for you, what, like, what's, what's, what, I, I got so many questions to ask and they're all hitting me at once. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing an ADD thing. It's like, Let's start here. What do you, you try think? writing it down first? <laughs> as a writer, that as would help a me a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm write just it curious. down. Did yes, you try write it down. That? Okay. I, I usually there's so many. What okay. a concept. Okay. Do you? Yes. What do you? What do you think? Well, in your opinion, you've done a lot of amazing stuff. What and makes I have a great a lot story? Of opinions. To you? A great. Story. <laughs> you sure do. <laughs> what makes a great story to you? I think a great story is something relatable, something mm. that, um, you know, if people can either it's something so informative and new that it makes us want to listen because it's so foreign to us, maybe, or something very familiar, um, 
because I think, you know, a good story will connect us emotionally. Um, yes. I do think that that's a big part of it because, um, you know, just like they say, like when they do stories for kids, a lot of times they'll use a teddy bear or an animal or something because we're not, you don't want to hit somebody on the head with, right. you know, there once was a little boy who didn't eat his dinner. Okay, that's like, okay, you know, a little too on the nose. But, you know, <laughs> there was this little teddy bear who just didn't like anything his mom made him to eat. So it's a little distant enough that we're not going to feel like somebody's slapping us in the face. But, you know, right. something so, oh, yeah, I can relate to that. So oh, what so makes good. a story good, it's the writing is very important, but the I think the performance is very important mm. too. Mm -hmm. um, although I have to be honest, I've seen some really bad performances with some really good stories that still, you know, the story sticks with you because it's important or it you know, we, uh, you can relate to it in some way. And, and so I, I, I'm not going to say it's always the performers, but it's such a collaborative thing. Um, yes. I think for me, I don't, I don't read that much, but I really like mm -hmm. good writing. And this is mm. what I've been known to do. If I start a book. Yeah. The first paragraph is written well. I'm like, Oh, I don't want to read this too fast. <laughs> this this yeah. is really good writing but then i'll go to the back and see how it ends <laughs> oh really I'll... really you spoil it for yourself i don't oh, spoil okay. it i just want to read the ending because you know why it's not it's... no i don't want to because... spoil it i just read the ending well because <laughs> It's now in this case, I'm not really answering your question this is and this is about literature and not drama but if it's really good writing, I want to read the sentences. I want to read how it's yeah. written. The story, the yes. ending doesn't matter. Yeah. If somebody actually has a really good command of the English language. Mm -hmm. So when you come to, if you want to talk about script writing, somebody who understands how people really think and act and talk, and that makes sense. For me, mm. if something doesn't make sense, as soon as it gets to the point where it doesn't make sense, I'm out of there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I hear you. It could be very simple. It could be very complex. But if someone does something that feels like it's out of character or just because they're trying to deliver a message, yeah. that turns me yeah, off. So can, can I'm giving you that. the Xerox answer because that's yeah. what There's I don't like. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's actually or the really... X-ray, X-ray answer. You know, oh, X-ray answer. Okay. Yeah, I think you know, and and it's hard because you know, Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. So how do we present? You know, if you can come up with something that's never been written before, that's gonna mm -hmm. be exciting too. You, you know, you know, interesting thing. I got again. There's something about that that verse has always bothered me as a creative person. It's like, oh, but I like to. But but Mark Hamby, lamplighter, you know, lamplighter. He um he he showed me something with it. Like this is this for creatives that might be frustrated like me with that verse. There's nothing new under the sun. It's like, oh, that's a bummer. It's like it's no. But he says this verse is under under the sun there's nothing new under the sun okay that's how man works things out but under heaven that's a whole different way of doing it in ecclesiastes mm -hmm. and and when you do things under heaven under there's all things new like you got, he's always creating a new song right well new mercies if you every consider morning. Morning. also yeah. says god's mercies are new every morning so those are new they're, yes, it's not like yeah. there aren't new things you know but if you read your bible that those people aren't any different than people mm -hmm. these days. So and that's, the, that's the, the relatable part you're talking about. Right? Yeah. The yeah. stories are the same, but the context is different. So, you know, that's mm -hmm. what changes, right? Is somebody, you, you know, like, hey, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You're freezing. Yeah. I'm you're freezing. freezing. I'm though. freezing. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean freezing. low bandwidth. I feel warm enough. Stand by. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. Are you guys south. in the same town? Mm -mm. No. Same nope. room. I'm in I'm in Valdosta and Brian's in Atlanta area. Mm -hmm. Oh, Atlanta area. I was just yeah. there. 
There you go. That's right. Yeah, John Henry. You, you did a, a voiceover Perfect. conference, didn't you? I did you a did workshop voiceover at Atlanta Voiceover Studio. We did an advanced animation workshop. That we is did. so cool. But so I want to cool. do more radio drama workshops. We talked about me. That. Oh yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, that that definitely, definitely. In fact, um, in fact, well, we might spoil it a little bit, Katie. But we're talking, yeah. we're talking, just secret information. Keep it to yourself. But we're talking about doing a workshop for oh, shh, possibly for that kind of thing. So moving on. Yeah, <laughs> well, that, moving. That, that that is that is what I want to do. I think. Um, yeah, I think you know if you're. What do you think makes a good story? You know what? I'm really thinking about what you said, relatable, because I'm reading, um, I like to read the classics. I mm -hmm. like to see movies, classics. I, I watch, you know, I'm reading I'm David Copperfield right now by Charles Dickens. And I'm what you said about relatable is so good because, you know, he's right in the 1800s, but he's writing stuff that sounds like, oh my goodness, this looks like my childhood right here. I, I think mean, people write, the people write off the classics like they are mm -hmm. not, uh, um, uh, what's the word not relatable but pertain they don't pertain to us today but that is outdated true. oh yeah. the very best dude They're so relatable yeah brian yeah. you're saying something i'm sorry i was just I, I was just saying outdated to help maybe find the word oh yeah, yeah it feels out but you look at his like charles dickens is by the way he's hilarious he's got this dry it's... wit about him it's just hilarious when you look at it but but his stuff is so relatable in fact i got I'm reading this. I'm thinking, and there's one. There are a couple of characters in there that you just love to hate. And it's like I got riled up. It's like, what's going on here? I'm just reading a book, but it's very relatable. And I think that's what makes a cla a, a true classic is something that lasts. Well, a the classic ages. Why means is that last? it lasts. It lasts. Yes, exactly. That's yeah. what classic yeah. means. You know, you still enjoy yeah. it later on. So, you know, like yes. classical and music is it's classic because it still you know exists. People still like it. Yeah. Um, so I, th I think it depends, you know, uh, humor, I think it helps tell yes. the story, uh, because it, yeah. it, well, like, even like my little book, you know, it, I wanted to approach a kind of heavy topic with, with humor because I think it makes yes. things more palatable. So, uh, yes. if you can. And not everybody has the same sense of humor, obviously. So that that's mm -hmm. tricky. I think I admire writers so much because I only read what they get. Thank you. Thank you. I don't write them. You know? <laughs> Honestly, you know, I mean, and I've had scripts where I'm like, this is just so like somebody's writing a report or just saying stuff, but they're not developing the character. You know, yes, and, yes, and I yes, think yes. character develop having a sense of who the person is, people are in the story makes a big difference. They're not just pieces on a chessboard that you know have to yes. here to get to the point. Um, and so I, I think that I mean that you're, you're talking about good writing though, not good stories. So you're, mm -hmm. this is a big well, it's, concept. It's, it's 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 all part of it though. It's all it, we're all telling great stories. Like we're all mm -hmm. storytellers. Like the cinematographer, the actor, the writer. We're all. It's all about telling stories. So you're yeah, Brian. You can say something. Uh, I was, well, I was gonna... it's it's just funny, uh, Katie, that you bring up uh, relatability because oddly enough, that's my favorite character. Just period. And Adventures in Odyssey is. Connie Kendall for uh Aww. for some really and it's wow. because she is a relatable character but not to me which is really funny and th this is kind of in it's really interesting that you brought this up because <laughs> I really hope my mom particularly the early episodes Connie and uh mm -hmm. her escapades to California um those episodes really helped me and her growing and just the raw personality of Connie Kendall, <laughs> which you expertly have 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 uh, have imbued. I really hope my mom doesn't <laughs> listen to this. It helped me understand my mom a lot and get mm. where she was coming from and understand because Connie, for some reason, I do not understand why it's just kind of an instinctual thing. It just reminds me of my mom in a lot of ways. Mm. Of what so, I imagined her point. as a teenager. And I was able to increase my, I mean, 
you as a kid, you have a limited patience with your parents and vice versa. But I was able to have a greater <laughs> appreciation and patience with my mother because of Connie Kendall. And that's why I owe Connie such that, a that, such That's a really interesting. So first, I want to say that's neat because, it, you know, if it helps you understand somebody you don't know, that's an interesting kind of relatable. It doesn't always have to be, oh, mm -hmm. this is about me. But I've been in similar situations. But what made you, what stood out that made you think about your mom? I'm cu really curious about this. What did you understand about her? I, I don't want to, um, I don't like, want Connie to. Connie means well, but she doesn't always do <laughs> things the way people think she should because she's a little <laughs> insistent. That. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, but, the, but the, the rough part about that is nine times out of ten my mom's generally right it's just not the way i would do things um <laughs> also connie's er, early life or er, earlier on like pre-christian mm -hmm. doesn't exactly mirror my mother's mo my mom's story of what i knew of as a kid but it's pretty close it's pretty close um enough to be relatable and go okay this might have been the thought process here this might have just in personality and decisions it's i like i said i can't really explain it fully but and my mom might kill me if she ever heard that so oh, i really i don't, I don't I think she, <laughs> no i think she would be happy to think mm -hmm. that you you don't have a we all want to be understood right mm -hmm. isn't that the, yes. like the, the yes. desire of everybody's heart mm. So if you think mm -hmm. that also part of story, if it explains somebody's story, mm -hmm. then th that's what's not just relatable, but also <sighs> makes you feel good that somebody understands you. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. that's so well put. That's so well put. So we, Katie, we what what is the understood? It's so well. Yeah, I love that. And thank you for sharing that, Brian. That's something I didn't yeah, know. That's that's really cool. What would, now what you, would you say, Katie? Is your mom and see what he's doing. <laughs> That's right. It's like, yeah, it is really what do you know? A, You're familiar to me. I had a professor at Liberty who, um, he's actually the guy that married us, and I was under him as a professor for years. And he, um, uh, at the wedding, he met my mom, and he he walked up to me afterwards and looked at me and go, "You make a lot more sense now." <laughs> <laughs> and he said it in love. It was a, it was funny. a compliment. It was just really funny. <laughs> Well, because if you Katie, think that's, is... oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead, go, no, go ahead. I was ahead. just no. thinking part of story Perfect. is backstory, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're yes. telling a story, yes. it's not just what's happening now, but what happened that got you to this point. That's part mm -hmm. of exactly. the storytelling, right? Now remember this part of what you 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 taught when you taught about character how how you get you you look at that character and maybe you you read what they have maybe they don't give you enough when when you're auditioning for something you you start to go into the backstory what how do they get like this what do they sound look at the shape of their mouth shape of their how do they what does that sound like and I remember you taking us through is is fascinating is fascinating well um, I'll tell you quick, the difference between. I think some actors, theater trained actors, mm -hmm. will take like two weeks to create a backstory and uh, <laughs> you know, they'll just go figuring out all this story about their character. Okay, that's mm -hmm. one approach as an actor to story. Um, uh -huh. We don't have time for that mm -hmm. in my business, okay? But yeah. I look at story as what is the story that's happening right now? Okay, so if you can just mm -hmm. jump into because that's where part of your own uh, personal reactions and feelings to things come into play. Like when, so like John was saying, if I look and see what I look like, what am I wearing? What am I? Uh, eyes are so important. I mean, we're, we're this is an yes. audio drama. This is animation, but you can't have big eyes and be mean. It just can't. You can't do it. <laughs> it doesn't come out that way. Uh, yeah, but if you know, so I think, okay, well, where are we? What's going on? Is it a dark forest? How do I feel in a dark forest? That's the story I'm telling myself to be in the moment mm -hmm. and just put yeah. myself in that story because all the other stuff could be helpful, but what's happening right mm -hmm. now? Mm -hmm. you yeah, know, what's, what's if, in the moment? If you're a nervous person and as you get older, you have much more tools to relate to when it comes to creating an emotional characters 
framework. But okay, if I'm nervous, it just says she's nervous. Okay, well, you could come up with, oh, she grew up in an orphanage and people be, you know, and this, and she fell off a boat when she, okay, oh, okay. but how about, let's just think, what makes me nervous? What are, what's the essence of being nervous? It's because maybe you don't think someone's going to like you. Someone's going to, you're going to get hurt. Let's just narrow it down to something real simple, right? So here I am, I'm nervous. I'm a nervous character anyway. And now I'm in this dark place and ah, I heard something, right? So, you know, just be in the moment. That's and let the good. story Excellent. that the writers create all the other stuff and you can just put yourself in that story. I love that. I love that. We are almost out of time. This has been so fun, but I got I gotta ask you this. I gotta ask you this. What is for you, what is your deepest joy in playing Connie or in doing what you do? We'll, we'll leave it wide open, but just just I, I will kind of relate to Connie, but you can spin it however you want. But what is your deepest joy in what you do? Hearing from people who listen and hearing their stories. Oh, mm -hmm. oh. You know? um, yeah. Really? Because yeah. I'm, it's nice to know, for one, we're not talking into a vacuum. Um, but, yes. Right? I mean, the seeing people's faces, seeing people like Brian's age who don't expect yes. to meet me, and they're like, because 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 our hearing is so intimate it's so ingrained mm -hmm. you know what we hear becomes a part of us and my voice is very familiar so i get mm -hmm. i meet these young men who you know i'm <laughs> way older and they're like can i give you a hug like they've like you know yeah. and, and it's just so amazing I, as one of those like guys family. it's because we feel like we know connie in a it, it, in an intimate way. It I don't know how I, I don't I don't know like, how like a sister. It. Like a sister, because, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we've we've seen her highs, we've seen her lows, we've seen her at her worst, and we've seen her at her best. And and if you were able to oh, you only see family sympathize like that. with her, then mm -hmm. you've connected emotionally and mm -hmm. you connected to the story. And you've mm -hmm. connected to my yeah. Connie's story. And it's moved you in some way mm -hmm. or made you feel helpless in some way. Or, you know, all those things. If if my communication trigger something it, it it stays it's just mm -hmm. part of who you are after that so it's really funny to surprise people <laughs> because to see their faces is just like <laughs> that is my biggest joy and i've shared it with other people who've been with me i'm like and they see it and they're like oh my gosh i know what you're talking about it's just mm -hmm. this i met a guy in london when i was there in may and um, I was I had a an autograph booth, and he started talking to me, and he he's he was from I think he's from Jamaica, and he he says you know I don't I, we we were growing up I didn't really watch too many cartoons so I don't know these things but there was something I could just feel in my spirit that we were connected, so he's telling me a little bit about himself, beautiful, kind as he said. So he grew up in Jamaica, didn't have much to do. I go, did you listen to Adventures in Odyssey? And he went, <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. I have to call my brothers and sisters. I got to let him know that. I Because he knew, he like, he recognized something in me. Obviously, that's, you know, that's what they had for entertainment. Like a lot of homeschoolers. They don't, mm -hmm. they're listening yes. all the time, right? So that connects. And, and that was so uh, just like, though, that's what thrills me the most. That's my answer. That's, Being oh, that's recognized, awesome. That's awesome. Not for me, but for what it means, what Connie or the show means to these other people. That's uh, wonderful. I love that. I love that. That's so well put. Well, I know you got it. You got it. You got something coming up. I want to respect your time, Katie. You've been, and I want, I want to have you back. I was like, oh, yeah. Have you back. What I ask you. Oh, yeah. Was that, was that Brian? Oh, just, I'm, I'm agreeing. Yes. Let's do well, it. you'll write down your <laughs> questions next time, right? John? I'll make sure he does. <laughs> I will make sure he does. Yeah. 
I'm <laughs> usually better about this, but I've just got so many I want to ask well, you. Well, we just, like to just, talk. Yeah. We do like to talk, but honestly, I, I would be happy to, uh, you know, what time is it now? I probably should Before head out, but I, please let's do, okay. let's do another yeah. thing. We'll, let's do it if again. If you want, I'll wear the same clothes. So it will look like yeah. a continuation. <laughs> okay. Katie, one final thing. Katie, that's me. great. For the yes, inspire, sir. for the inspiring, aspiring storyteller, being a writer, um, being a writer, a actor, voice actor, uh, editor, sound person, uh, what would it be? Piece of advice and encouragement that you would give them to to close us out today? Be vulnerable. Hmm. 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 And that's how you'll be relatable. Mm. Let it resonate with you. Don't just talk. Just don't try to tell what you're doing, but make it uh, palpable for you. And then it will be for everybody else. And it comes like music, dialogue, circumstances, allow real reality. You have to have reality. Even animation is exaggerated reality. Mm. If it's not it real, it's not relatable. Yep. In my yep, opinion. yep, yep. Wow. Something has to be true. True. Truth. I love that. I love that. Oh, we then it, she just hit upon one of our notes there. We hit about talk about truth. Katie, this has been beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, katielee.com go to katielee.com and you can learn more about her coaching about go to patreon.com and watch Woo. tell you later show because and tell you later yep she's got the podcast coming up and she's you can in, tell um... me how nice my hair looks today <laughs> <laughs> katie your hair looks great today thank you in fact thank for you. our listeners our listeners out there you have to use your imagination her hair looks fabulous i am having a really good hair day <laughs> Thank you for joining us for this episode of Story Chat. If you want to hear more, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions for John or feedback on the show, please email us at storychatwithjohn at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.